Okay, so it's me and William today. Again, we do this a lot, me and Mr. Will. Uh, here's the deal. Somebody asked me how much of this bail stacker's operation is automatic and how much is, in, is input, like from me. And I would have to say about 50% is me, the other half is automation. And I'm going to wait for this car to get past here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw the uh, camera here and I'm going to try and get it in a spot where I can actually see the problem with these tractors is they're all plastic inside, right? So anyways, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, throw it on the back and then I'm going to do a voiceover of what's automatic and what is not. And that will be, that will be that. Now these machines do have sensors in them and once in a while the sensor will screw up or it won't read or I don't have the machine set correctly. But first thing you're going to do is you're going to hit this button here on the right which will I'm going to show the buttons first. First thing you're going to do is you're going to swing the loader out and it's all the way out and I'm going to push that button there and it's going to come down. I will release and it will continue to go automatic if I hold it for like three seconds or something like that. Now I'm going to push the button and fold in the arms. I'm going to bump the bale. I'm going to grab the, squeeze the bale. The bale then hits a sensor in the center of that loading bay and the squeeze arms or the squeeze fingers or the grab fingers come out and hold that bale. Now I can open my arms back up and the bale is held firmly to the bed by the uh, forks. So I'm going to come up to my next bale and I'm going to bump it before I feel it or hear it and now I'm going to squeeze. I squeeze it, stacker comes up, I hold it for three seconds, the thing goes up, and that's automatic. Then the paddle comes and that's automatic. Now I'm going to release my arms. It, when the paddle comes up, it releases the forks and the arms. When I open the arms up and the paddle forces it back, the paddle returns and then it automatically comes down. And then I'm reset automatically for the next bail. Oops. And the process is repeated many times until I'm full. So we'll do that one more time. Now that the, of course the bed is out, I don't have to, or the whole table is out, I don't have to uh, do too much. I'm grabbing, forks are coming out. I've got the bale. I'm going to open up my arms and I have it tilted back just a little bit so the bale's not dragging on the ground. Straw, it will pull through. Hey, it does not. Uh, when you go across a rough field. This field isn't too terribly rough. I'm not going too terribly fast because I don't want to uh, knock William's teeth out of his head. Now I'm going to grab that second bale and I'm squeezing. I'm holding one, two, three. I let go. It goes up automatically. Paddle comes up. Fork comes out. I open my arms. Paddle forces it down to the end comes back up, paddle resets, table comes to the ground all automatically. And then it's back again for the next go around. Okay, this bale is going to be stubborn. In the middle of the, of the loading table there is a depression plate and there's a sensor on the back side of that. If you have any kind of a, uh, what do you call it, a banana bale, that sucker will not read. It won't press it far enough. So then you have to back up, put your table all the way down, raise the bale up, bounce it off the bale behind, that flips it over, and now it's not a banana bale on the side that you want. The forks come out, and I'm loading two at a time now, so life is good. Uh, when you're on a hill, you want to always face your loader uphill or downhill. If the hill is too steep downward, you only want to load it uphill. If it's too steep uphill, 
you have to do it downhill. Downhill is better than uphill because they will tumble backwards. And this one here is a damn banana bell too, I can just guarantee it. Sometimes you can get it to bounce and it'll, it'll do its thing, but not at this time, got to do it again. So I got to flip it around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually uh, get this second bail on there, see if it bounces it. No, I have to flip this bail too. No biggie dee diggy dee. I'm going to pick it up. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to throw you on the back here. I'm going to shut you off. I'm going to finish loading this, dump, uh, stack it up, and then I'm going to take you through the process. Oh, come on. Okay, so as promised, for the 16th time being interrupted, uh, I'm going to talk my way through what is going on here with this stack wagon. So I just stacked the uh, that stack that I had just grabbed in the beginning of the video, and at this point, that is an automatic function. When you hold the button down for to reset the bed, everything resets on this stack wagon to center. So you hold the button, count to three, and it comes down by itself. It closes the arms up by itself. It centers itself, and you can just concentrate on driving. That's the whole. That's the whole thing right there, uh, and it's pretty simple. I mean. Once you learn this machine, it's pretty efficient. I would say it's very efficient. Uh, when you first get it, you wonder why in the hell you ever bought it, to be honest with you, because it's, uh, it's complicated to find the buttons and make them go the right direction at all time, uh, every time. So when you get somebody that knows what they're doing with this machine... Okay, so now I'm swinging it out, and uh, that is all me. And I'll open the arms. Once it starts to come down, it is on automatic function right there. So you hold it for three seconds and it comes down. I close the arms up a little bit and I grab the first bale. I am squeezing and then you'll see the forks come out into the bale. That is an automatic function. I will come up to the next bale eventually. And uh, you can hear William downstairs torturing his grandmother. Uh, do, do. So I hit the next bale, I grab that, I squeeze, and this is at this point an automatic function. The paddle comes up, I open the arms, and automatically the forks come out of the bale and the paddle pushes the bales to the back. That is automatic function. So, and it's just a repetitive process. I am doing everything from here. I will close these up or I will just flat squeeze this bale. And you'll see the uh, spikes come out. Spikes don't come out. I have to do this bit of bolt up there. The spikes came out. Now we're in automatic function again. It goes up. The paddle comes around. The forks come out and it pushes it to the back. So it really doesn't take long to load a lot of material. Uh, and that's all and it resets automatically all the way down to the to the ground so once that paddle comes back it will drop that table automatically you don't have to worry about it it just does it now once in a while you won't get that tongue swung out far enough and uh, it'll cause an ass ache but uh, here we go I think this is where I have problems all right so the forks did not come out so Yes, the forks didn't come out, so you got to grab the bale because the bale has a slight deviation in the center of it. To grab the bale, pick it up, drop it on the corner of the next bale that flips it over, and then you'll see the forks come out, and then up it goes. It is an oh, I didn't hold it long enough, and now it's an automatic function. Forks come out, paddle comes up, thing goes all the way to the back, and that's it. And it's that's the repeated process. It does this for. I can do about a thousand bales a day in close proximity. Uh, when we were down in North Carolina, I was doing somewhere between uh, eight and a thousand a day. Timothy was doing the remainder. We were generally pretty well caught up every day when we were down there, but for the most part, in Hayfield to home, about a thousand bales a day. I did not do a thousand bales today, but I certainly did five or six hundred uh, today. So here it didn't flip all the way. So you just do this, you, and that's all you got to do. You flip them over. It doesn't take much time, but it does take time. 
I'm going to pull this stack wagon into the shop and I'm going to weld a piece of steel on the face of that stupid thing so that it will depress with a uh, yeah with a, uh, a banana bale on there actually what I need is a small dome or disc or something to weld onto it and it needs to be round uh, so that it doesn't catch the snag and cause problems because that stupid little plate is only on like two springs and uh, it can be an issue so I will you don't play with that I will lead you leave you with the remainder of this uh, oh wait I'll let you do the I'll go all the way to the end here there was I put 12 bales on it this time and uh, you know the automatic functions are automatic functions and there's one more automatic function that I did not mention and it's coming up very shortly so it's it this wagon gets quite loaded I mean, if you take 12 of these bales and they are weighing 13, 1400 pounds, there's a lot of weight on there. <laughs> you know, you're looking at 15,000 pounds, you know, which is quite a bit. Okay, so the bales come up. I'm ready to go. I'm like, that's it. I'm zipping out of here. Arms out. It sets it in there. I squeeze this. It comes down. And then you tap the, center, the button to swing the machine in, and that swings back automatically. And usually once it starts that, I just throw the paddle up on the uh, up on the dash there, and off I go. And I take off for the pile. So I will leave you with this. I'm going to uh, just splice this in, and the rest you can watch in real time. And, uh, you know, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you didn't, well, there's other videos on other channels that you can go watch, because I can't satisfy you.